Hey there friends, welcome to the 40 day sugar fast. We are on day 34. <laughs> and the title of this day is remember. The text message for us, um, text message. <laughs> it has been a long day today. I'm just going to be real with y'all. Um, Satan is working real hard on me and I am just worn out. Um, it's been tough. It's been really tough. And I'll share a little bit uh, more in a little bit here. But the text that she has for us today is when the disciples reached the other side, they had forgotten to bring any bread. Jesus said to them, watch and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. And they began discussing it among themselves, saying, we brought no bread bread. But Jesus was aware of this said, but Jesus aware of this said, Oh, you of little faith. Why are you discussing among yourselves the fact that you have no bread? Do you not uh, yet perceive? Do you not remember the five loaves for the 5,000 and how many baskets you gathered or the seven loaves for the 4,000 and how many baskets you gathered? And that's Matthew 16, five to 10. So um, the whole premise of this chapter is to remember what God has done for you through this fast. And she says, when this fast is over, will you remember how God filled you to overflowing as you spent time with him? Or will he need to keep working miracles on your behalf to keep your attention? I would like to think that, you know, man, I'll be much more aware you know, I'll be focused, um, but I can tell you even now, this far into the fast, I'm struggling. I'm struggling um, and not with food, just with other other things that are presenting itself um, that uh, are definitely um, stuck in my inner walls <laughs> of, you know, the days before that we talked about those inner walls. Um, sometimes we keep hidden or um, we don't want people to know or we just don't want to unearth them ourselves and we don't want Jesus in. We keep those up. Well, I asked for God to break those down and it's not pretty. <laughs> it's not pretty and I'm struggling. Um, so will I remember or will he have to keep doing miracles on on? my behalf to keep my attention i don't know i don't know um but i will do my best i will continue to do my best and she says that you know the pharisees and sadducees they wanted more evidence they wanted visual evidence but jesus wanted and still wants faithful followers who believe through faith and not visual evidence. And she quotes the scripture of when he's talking to the Pharisees and Sadducees about them wanting him to perform signs so that they could believe him. And he says, an evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign and a sign will not be given it except the sign of Jonah, Matthew 16, 4. And, um, so he talks about um, the, uh, it, I mean, it, the whole sign is uh, eventually what happens is that um, his resurrection is what she's referring to or goes back to. Um, the religious leaders would not believe. So he walked away from them, got back on the bo boat with his disciples and left. Um it's so dumbfounding to me, but if someone were to come to me today and say, yep, this is the path you should follow. I am Christ. Now that would be hard for me to believe period because of what we find in the Bible. But if we didn't have all of that and we have this man coming and performing miracles and he's proclaiming to be um, the Messiah, 
how do you think you would react? It's not your typical culture. I mean, it's, if, especially if you were a Jew, you didn't really, you wouldn't really um, have that already innately in you as far as um, knowing that he's the Messiah. Um, Jewish culture was wrapped around God. They didn't know of Jesus as the Messiah. Um, and today there's still some Orthodox Jews that don't believe in the Messiah, but then you have some Messianic Jews that do um, believe in the Messiah. But here we see these religious leaders, Pharisees and Sadducees, not believing at all. And they're wanting Jesus to perform signs because they're missing all the ones around them. They're so unaware. They're so caught up in everything that they're doing. They're missing what's in front of their face. How often do we do that? How often do we miss what is in front of our face that God is putting in our path? And it's, it's easy for us to get like frustrated with the Pharisees and Sadducees. Like, this is Jesus you're talking about. Like, he is awesome. He's the Messiah. He does miracles. Like, who do you think you are, Pharisees and Sadducees? But we're missing them today. We're getting caught up in the things that Satan wants us to get caught up in. And we're missing the message. We're missing our purpose. And so she says um, that even even Jesus's closest companions required sign after sign for their faith to remain engaged. She says, remember the faithful way God has provided for you. When you remember God's past faithfulness, you are more prone to stay faithful to him. So remember, 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 remember. And if I were to go through the Bible and look at all of the times that people said the word remember, it was a lot. And a lot of it stemmed around God's word, remembering God, remembering what he has to say, remembering Jesus, remembering what he's done, remembering how we are to be, uh, all of these things. Remember, remember, remember. Don't simply move on with the hope of living different. Continue living each day with him and you will live differently. So don't go on your own thinking, oh, after this fest, I'm just going to be different. I'm going to live differently because I no longer am eating sugar or um, I'm eating more healthy and I'm doing what I need to do. No, live each day with him as the center of your life. And you will automatically be changed. And I say that and it hurts my heart because the moment that I start thinking differently, and it has happened today, it happened yesterday, happened the day before, the moment I start thinking differently, the moment I start feeling like I'm the victim, I'm forgetting to walk with the victor. And that's why... That's why is I'm not remembering and it hurts because I've been faced with all these challenges. Satan wants to pull me down. He wants to pull you down. And the more and more we grow closer to God, he wants you to feel frustrated. He wants you to feel like you're, you're tired. He wants you to feel like you just want to give up. And I'm not saying that I, I want to give up or I will give up, but man, it is exhausting when you try to fight Satan on your own and you won't win. And so, yeah. That's my realization for myself today. <laughs> um, so remember... Remember the Lord's provision to them during their time in the desert. That's what he wanted them to remember. And she says this, 
It isn't food that ultim ultimately sustains you, but God and his word. Your body may be learning that it feels healthier physically when you're not eating sugar, but your spirit is learning to feast on God and on every word that comes from his mouth. He's faithfully filled with you, faithfully filled you with his spirit and provided you with everything you need during this fast and beyond. He has proven himself faithful. Now you must remain faithful. It's a good lesson. Open my eyes that I may see the wonderful things in your law. Psalm 119.18. And you know what's interesting about that? As I read through this today, this day today, Psalm 119. Kid you not. It's the psalm that I studied last night. It's the psalm that we discussed in our Bible study at church today. It was a psalm, the same exact psalm that I read in another book that I'm studying from. And I come here and it mentions the psalm again. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm thinking that God wants me to read it. So. Before I go to bed tonight, I'm going to meditate on his word and I'm going to go to that Psalm 119 and I'm going to open my eyes that I might see the wonderful things of his word, of his law, of his commands. So I, I really pray that you do too. I pray that you remember. I pray that you remember what he's done for you through this fast, what he continues to do for you in your future. I pray that God will open your eyes, your spiritual eyes, so you can see the wonderful things that he has done for you. So, remember. So, I'm going to read the prayer that she has for us today. Okay. Holy Spirit, help me to remember what I've learned so that I don't have to go back and relearn the same lessons again and again. I'm eager to learn more from you now. Open my eyes and allow me to see wonderful things in your law. And open my ears so that you can tell me all the unsearchable things that I do not know yet. And when I forget, for I will forget sometimes, gently remind me again. In Jesus' in Jesus' patient name, amen. So may you remember all that he has done for you. And may you be blessed because of it.